okay you can see now I've got most of the colors done and what I did uh, was just basically follow the outline and just kind of made it uh, concentric triangles just till I filled in the star points completely and now I'm on my last color of, of the star and I talked earlier about turning corners so I kind of wanted to give you an idea of how to do that so you can see I've gotten to a corner so I'm going to go ahead and finish my beads going this way in that corner and then I'm going to show you how I go around the corner so I'm going to pick up three beads because that's going to be just enough to get to the end of the point and I'm sorry it still takes me longer to pick up beads than it does to stitch them down So I just lay them down and hold them in place and then I take my needle and go directly into the point and in the same manner as before in the back stitching go back up at about right behind the second bead and then go through bead two and three so normally this is where we would continue back stitching and pick up three more beads but if I did that and pulled it this way it wouldn't quite lay down correctly so what I'm going to have to do is go back take my needle back into the fabric okay so now I've got my needle behind the fabric and what I'm going to do is come back up where I want the first bead to be right get my needle to cooperate here about right there and then I'm going to start my row going this way so I'm going to turn my fabric and hopefully not hook my fabric up in the thread okay and now I'm going to pick up my three beads lay them down flat against the fabric and try to really work them into that corner to the end of the thread where it came up through the fabric in the same manner hold them in place go through the fabric at the end of the third bead come back up through the fabric behind the second bead and then go through beads two and three and that's how I turn corners to try and keep my points as sharp as possible without them turning, uh, you know, getting rounded off. And when I come back, I'm going to be done stitching the red beads on and I'm going to show you how I do the letters. Okay, so I've got one letter um, in my initials done and it was a bit of a a learning curve for me um, at first I thought because I was you know because of the curves and whatnot that I would need to do one bead at a time and I actually found that it was easier to stay with the three beads at a time um, and I'm going to show you how I manage the curves uh, doing the beads and I'm sorry I'm trying to pick some beads up on my needle and as usual, I'm slow. Okay, so what I did to do the curves, rather than just going in a straight line, like, I'm sorry, just in a straight line, what I did was kind of let the beads be a little bit loose, and when I put them in their curve, like that, then I went in and on my line, and just held them in that curve and then when I went back through the second bead and the third bead it actually held the curve so that worked out really well and the other thing that I found was very useful was you can see my outline here um, was just to make sure to be very very careful to make sure that whenever I went into the fabric with my needle that I stayed directly on the line and then whenever I came up behind my second bead to make sure that my needle was coming up on that line so it really kept my design neat 
and in the shape that I wanted it to be in. Um, so that's how I handled the initials. Okay, so here is the completed project and I've got to tell you it turned out so much better than I ever uh, imagined uh, considering that this was my first time doing any type of bead embroidery. Um, for the middle detail here that was entirely too small to do with the small seed beads, I just went in with embroidery floss and backstitched over the outline that I had transferred on there with graphite paper. And if you want any instructions on how to backstitch, I will link below or right right here um, with a video that I have. Uh, it's counted cross stitch, but it, it's the same technique for backstitching for this as I used on the counted cross stitch. So there's the initials of my organization, and here are my initials, and then the symbol for my organization. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm just really pleased with this. It wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it would be. So if you're considering doing something like this, uh, dive right in. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I've only got, you know, just a few dollars invested in products. And if it had turned out horribly, well, then I could have just started over because I have more than enough product left to do that. There are more than enough beads and fabric and, and fusible interfacing left to do that. The uh, last step before we completely finish it up, and to finish it up, I'm going to have to iron on my last piece of fusible interfacing, and I'm going to have to stitch my flaps down um, to finish up my book cover. So before I do that, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but see I've got a couple of marks, and um, on the other side was a little bit of uh, some smudges and such. So I want to go ahead and wash it, which is also going to help pre-shrink the fabric. And the interfacing directions also called for pre-washing it to pre-shrink it, uh, so that once everything's put together, there won't, you know, if I have to wash it later, I won't have to worry about extra shrinkage. So uh, to do that, I just put some cold water in my bathroom sink, and I've just got a small amount of laundry detergent, and I'm just going to put that in the water. And with my hand, I'm just going to mix that up and dissolve the detergent. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my fabrics right in there. And the reason for using cold water um, is because of that little bit of embroidery floss that I used for the middle stitching. Um, if the color wasn't set and I put it in hot water then it would possibly bleed onto my white fabric which I wouldn't want. So I put it in cold water and the directions for the interfacing said to let it soak in the water for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, the reason I didn't pre-shrink these smaller pieces that I ironed on the back um, is because they were so small I wasn't really worried about the shrinkage issue with them. But if I was going to be working on a much larger piece of bead embroidery then I'd probably want to pre-shrink it before I started. And if there's any stubborn spots on the fabric that won't come out um, just through soaking it, then I'm just going to use an old toothbrush that I have and just put a little more detergent on it and uh, just simply, I'm sorry my camera wire keeps getting in the way, and just simply scrub on that spot and try and remove it or possibly use a little stain remover. But I think this is going to work out fine. So after this is cleaned and dried, then I'll show you how to finish putting the book cover together.